There's someone in this service that is tired of attacks at night. Tonight you will live with the mercy of God. There's someone in this service that is, is tired of unable to give account of how he spends his resources. Money enters the hand, but he can't give account. Money arrives, problem arrives. If there is no money, there is no problem. But as soon as the money arrives, the problem arrives. Good news. God will show you mercy tonight. There's someone in this service that has been battling with waste challenge for a long time. Tonight, congratulations because God will show you mercy. There's someone in this service there's a battle, there's a fight over land property. Tonight, before you leave here, God will show you mercy and settle that matter. There's someone in this service whose daughter has been a challenge to her. She has been bringing disgrace to the family. But good news, God is going to arrest her by your coming here tonight. There's someone in this family, you have come, God brought you here so that there will be deliverance in the entire family. It looks like the whole family is besieged by witchcraft. Shout that fire. Shout it at the top of your voice. The whole family is bewitched by witchcraft. But tonight, God will show you mercy. God will show you mercy. And that, that person from the land of the dead telling you to join them, you are going nowhere. Father, preach upon this service. And please do amongst us what you know how to do best. So that at the end of this service, we shall live here knowing fully well that we have come to meet the Lord. In Jesus' precious name. You are living here with an encounter. Let your amen be the loudest in the house. Give the Lord a clap and a shout as you take your seat. I don't need to touch anybody. As the word of God is going out from this altar now, all manner of miracles will be happening. All manner. All I want you to do is just be sensitive. Avoid distraction. Be sensitive because you are about to see something that will surprise you. I'd like to welcome everyone to this month of evangelism. September 2020. It's our month of evangelism. The meaning of that to somebody that perhaps is coming here for the first time is all the teachings, all the preaching. This month is going to be centered on evangelism because that is our, our topic for the month. You are welcome in Jesus' name. For tonight, I'm going to be reading First Peter chapter 3, verses 2 to 5. And I would like to take that reading from the NIV. First Peter chapter 3, 2 to 5. I better advise you to open your Bible. Verse 2. When they see the purity and reverence of your lives, your beauty, should not come from outward adornment. Outward adornment. That shouldn't be the basis of your beauty. Such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Verse 5. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands. Father, please take us somewhere. Take us somewhere. There is where we are meant to be in this life. Take us there. The word of God is a catalyst. The word of God is a conveyor. 
the word of God is a transporter. Transport us to where we are meant to be. In case there's somebody here whose progress has been arrested this night, you will begin to see speed. Tonight you shall regain motion in Jesus' precious name. Dressing for evangelism. Dressing. Dressing. You know dressing? The clothes you put on. Dressing for evangelism. The way you dress as a believer matters. The way you dress to church matters. Otherwise, somebody's dressing could be frustrating our evangelistic move. You don't, you don't wear the clothes they wear to club and come to church. No, no. 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 If you want to go and sleep, I believe the, there's a the cloth you, you can use. If you are to be wedded, there's a cloth you can use. Is that correct? So, if you are coming to church, there should be clothes you should put on. Please, I'd like you to understand what I'm saying. Church is a place of decency. Where people come and feel the presence of God. Where people come and feel God. Church is not a place where somebody will come and begin to think of committing immorality because of someone's dressing. Sit down, sit down. The brother had no mind for immorality. The sister had no mind for immorality, but just, just beholding somebody's dressing, the mind starts dancing in that direction. When you go to the shrine of a herbalist, there's something you feel. There's something you feel. There's something you feel. When you come to the shrine of God, there's something you feel. There's something you feel. Is God, our text says, there is one beauty that should not fade. The beauty of the inner, inner person. The beauty that, that cannot be seen. The beauty that can't be seen. No matter the cream you are using now, one day cream will not cream you. It's a matter of time. <laughs> one day. One day. No matter the attachment you are attaching, one day there will be no place to attach. You see, this brother said, Madam, you, I'm talking to you now, so your head will be one day. It's not. <laughs> there's, there's, there won't be any place to attach, no hair to hold for the attachment to stay. Dress him for evangelism. Hey, which church is that? Who are the people talking about Christ? Banner of life. Is it that church where they are, where they are dressing and dressing like they are going to club? Everybody listen. I don't want to hear Eze Ezeoku or whatever. Just listen to me. Because, because what I'm saying, everybody, 90% of the people here are implicated. Two objectives of this message. Number one, to understand that it is not all dresses you wear to the church. That's objective number one. It is not all dresses you wear to the church. Mommy Anenche said something. She said herself and her husband, they came out from Sheraton Hotel. Maybe they went for a program. And then they saw two ladies. Of course, maybe call girls. And then, mommy, 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 mommy invited them. Come, come. They are well-known personalities in Abuja. They said, that is Dr. Polenetje's wife. And they came. And then, mommy, mommy began to invite them to church. And then one of them said, I would have loved to come, ma. I don't have church clothes. That is, even prostitute knows that there's cloth church. I would have loved to come. I don't have 
church clothes. I can't mark. I, the way I'm dressed now, I can't dress like this to church. But there are people that call themselves believers. They don't know that there is, there is club clothes and there is church clothes. Let your beauty not be the physical beauty. Because this beauty will fade. Well, light, I like it will fade. Number two, to understand that there are people whose business is to make negative comments about churches. There are people whose business is to make negative comments about churches. They have no business. Once, once they, there's no business to do, they gather. The next thing is they pick one church. Pick one pastor. And then they, begin, they begin to criticize. Three, you dress to glorify God, not to cause temptation. That is the third objective. You dress to glorify God, not to cause temptation. You dress to glorify God, not to cause temptation. Because majority of men, in fact, all men are moved by what they see. All men are moved by what they see. Points to note as we get ready to go. Points to note. Number one, you don't dress to expose the parts, the parts of your body that is meant to be covered. That is an abuse of dressing. You don't dress and then expose. The dressing is tailored in such manner that the part of your body that is meant to be covered is exposed. That is, that is a dressing from the pit of hell. Fashion from the pit of hell. Satanic demons arrange that fashion. The chest that is to be covered. Very good cloth. You spoil the cloth by opening the chest. I saw, I saw one woman somewhere. Come. You know, there's this cloth. I think it's the latest fashion now. Most women, if they sew, they, this place, they will tear it. I call it tear. That's, they, they will tear here and tear here. I don't know what I, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. They will tear here and tear here. So I asked the woman, excuse me, madam, what is the meaning of this? He said, it's just fashion. Then the daughter came up and said, the meaning of the fashion is show me your hand. <laughs> show me your hand show me your hand then she also told me that there's another one called off off shoulder coat <laughs> and see the sister there when I told me <laughs> off shoulder how can you dress you say you are saying see people people should see your hand see your chest people should see your legs what are you looking for? And the, the, the major challenge is married women. They are even competing with single girls. They don't want single girls to see road. Married women. So you don't dress to expose the part of your body. As a matter of fact, it's ungodly for any believer to dress and expose the part of the body that is meant to be covered. The skirt is already short, but they will tell Taylor to see it again. It's already short. It's already short. Please, please, please. Banner of Life Church is a place of decency. We are not organizing nightclub as here. Please, please, everybody, before you leave your house, go to the mirror and look at the mirror. This, this dressing, does it justify church? This, this my look, does it look like a belief? I'm a believer. If I carry my Bible now, it's the month of evangelism. You can do evangelism anytime, any day. If I, as I'm on my way to church now, if I decide to share the, the message of Christ with somebody, will they listen? So, every time you dress, 
make sure that the parts of the body that are, that are meant to be covered are well covered. Covered. The breast, cover it. Nobody wants to see your breast. Cover it. Cover it. Cover it. Cover it. The laps, cover it. You don't dress to tempt, you dress to edify, number two. Point number two. You don't dress to tempt, you dress to edify. Everyone seated here, every time you dress, is either you are dressing to tempt or you are dressing to edify. Take it or leave it. Every time you dress to go out, is either you are dressing to tempt somebody or you are dressing to edify. One sister came to me and said, Daddy, 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 I'm a married woman. Who, I'm tired. Every time I'm moving on the street, they are calling me. As she was talking to me, I was looking at her dressing. I don't know whether you understand what I'm trying to say. I, I, I looked at her dressing. Why wouldn't they say with this kind of dressing? With this kind of dressing. Anybody that wears skirts that is tight, you are dressing to tempt. It's not fashion. That is tight. The pint, the line of the pint is showing. I, I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. The line of it's just tight. All the contour, they are out. doesn't need to undress for you to know the shape of the body. doesn't need to undress. Just all the part of the, everything. The pressure is so much that everything must come out. Everything. Everything. Whether it is skirt, whether it is trouser, anything that is tight as a child of God you are not permitted to wear. What are you looking for? People will find. They know they trouble themselves for all those kind of dressing. People will find. People will find. Now people will not find. Women looking like men. And they are the ones causing this problem. See, beautiful girls. They know they. They know they. Look, they know they to apply to. To I don't know what to use. To plenty makeups. Because the thing now follow come. <laughs> follow come follow come eyelash no be follow come what do they call that one they put on the nails is not follow come what do they call the other one again that's eyelash now pencil you rule it from here People that God has blessed with beauty, they don't go into too much fashion. They don't. They don't. They don't. You apply cream, apply cream, apply cream, apply cream. You want to look white. That my daughter, stand up. See this one now, follow come. Abby, my daughter, stand up. God bless you. I will dash you money after this service. You know why? For maintaining the color of your skin. I will dash. Make sure you see me. I will give you money. See, if now some people, they don't, they don't turn to that person. And come. Those of you where they bleach, I don't want to call anybody out. If I bring you out and this girl now, she find pass you. Sit down, my daughter. Find pass you. Just very irritating. You see the hand here. Very, very irritating. Very irritating. You won't know what I'm talking unless one day I tell you to wash the feet of the people during feet wash.
<laughs> because there's going to be feet wash on Saturday. <laughs> hey! <laughs> when was the last time? You saw a white woman walk into a, a, cosmet a cosmetic shop and say, please, I'm looking for a cream that will darken my skin. And even this cream matter, some men, hi. Some men, they fight, they fight with cream with their wives. They'll mix this. What? If a woman is using cream, we can understand a little. But you as a man, what are you looking for? See, fine boy without success is you are the most ugliest person on the earth. Doing fine boy, 35 fine boy, at 40 fine boy, nothing to show. That is fine nonsense. You don't dress to tempt, you dress to edify. You dress all church workers. On choir, ushers, counselors, and all those that are always, you know, based on their work, they are meant to dress. I don't want to see anybody with anything tight. I don't want to see it. Go and change all those your skirts. Change it. Your dressing is the first introduction about yourself, number three. Your dressing is the first introduction about yourself. Your dressing is the first introduction about yourself. When you see a soldier dressed in soldier uniform, you don't need any introduction. When you see a doctor in his dressing, you don't need an introduction. When you see a lawyer in his dressing, you don't need an introduction. When you see a, a, a reverend father, you don't need what? An introduction. And when you see Baba Lawo, you don't need what? Introduction. Because your dressing is enough introduction. Your dress. That's how you dress. Even though you are not a call girl, people may mistake you for a call girl. Is that correct? Yes. Ring here. Yeah? Ring here. Yeah? Ring here. Yeah? Here. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, here. Huh? Chain. Thank you. Please be supplying me. Chain on the legs. You dress with decency. Dressing may not be important, but dressing can connect you to people that will help your life. You don't have to expose your body for you to marry. Because the, the, uh, you think you are exposing your body to attract the men, they are only coming to test you. When they are done, they will go to village and look for a virgin. I don't know whether we still have virgins in the village, but they, they go to vi village. They go to, they say this one, I don't open too much. But for you, you think you are trying to attract them. They are, they are only coming to perch. Take their share and go. I'm telling you. So you can imagine you as my daughter. 40 men have slept with you. Why, why, why do you hate yourself like this? 60 men, only you. You have seen 60 different men. What is still there again? What is, what is there again? What is there? What are you living for your husband again? I have always told everyone in this church, you can decide to marry as a virgin. And that is the best for every lady. Either as a primary virgin or as a secondary virgin. Because 
if you make up your mind that no man will see your nakedness again, only your husband. That is virginity. But of the secondary level. And therefore the girl that no man has ever seen, you tell yourself, never the first person that will cross my leg is my husband. What, what, what a honor. What a dignity. In those days, in the Bible days, you, you go and buy something big as gift and take to the father of the girl. Even in South Africa here now, just close to us, South Africa from here to South Africa, maybe four hours by air. That is, there is price for virgins. That's, uh, what, do, what do you call it? Uh, bright price for virgins and there's bright price for those that are not what? Virgins. I don't know how they do it. Whether they take them for test, I don't know. So, eh? test. Sorry? The elderly women will test them. Say, no, this one, they have tested her. Tested her. This one, they have tested her. They have tested her. It should be your prayer that when you wear your wedding garment, that should be your prayer. When you, when you wear your wedding garment, your husband you are wedding with is going to be the first man to see you. What a joy. What a joy. What a celebration. How many of you are aware that these days, these days, people come for wedding, but they have already, they have, they, they, no wedding. It's no wedding. We are practicing religion. We are practicing, it's not wedding. Wedding means we are pure. Wedding means I have not known him. He has not, you know, I've not known him. I've not known her. Kiss your, kiss your bride for the first time. Then you deceive everybody. You deceive the pastor and deceive everybody. You are about to wed in case you are here. Please desist. Desist. Let's close. Why your dressing is very important as far as evangelism is concerned. Three things I will say and then we are done. Why your dressing is very important as far as evangelism is concerned. If you are going for evangelism, now you can agree with me that it's not all dresses you will wear. It's not all dresses you will wear. It's not all dresses. Some of, some, some, some of my children went for evangelism. Even despite one of them that didn't that dress well, because I saw her dressing is very correct. Still, men still they talk. I don't know. I don't know whether you understand, sir. One, well, I think, I think, I think when they were telling me, the, they, they were giving me the feedback. Say one, say, say after I will come to the church, but after church, what is the next thing? Those are the people where, 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 where. See, see. Church should not copy the word, but let the word copy church. Every church is supposed to be an, an agent of change. Every church, every church is supposed to change the society. It's supposed to change the world. Every church is meant to change your generation. Number one, unbelievers are watching you. Unbelievers are what? If you are not aware, one of the churches they watch most in Kano is Banner of Life. Correct? <laughs> because every day they must make comment. Every day. Every day. If they don't make comment about the pastor, they, they must make comment. But what I'm saying is, what they are saying, let it not be true. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> because if they are talking about anybody, that means the person is making impact. That means the person is, is very important. As a matter of fact, if they are not talking about you, something is wrong. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm talking about? That is, you did nobody they talk about you. No, you are nobody. But if you are somebody, they must talk. There's one person they talk about every day. 
Who is that? President Muhammadu. <laughs> every day. Every day. In fact, coronavirus, that, the, the talk shifted to another level. So some people say, hey, this, is, this is what I hear, heard about the church. This is what I heard about the church. I know they go again. Foolishness. <laughs> Foolishness. I don't work. I don't work. I don't work on what I hear about people. I don't. I don't. I've heard. Okay. I watch. If I see you be, I'll say, okay, that's what they say. Uh, maybe gradually I begin to change my mind. Even at that, I want to see how I can help the person. Praise God. I say, praise God. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Bishop Ode said one day, he was in the car driving and they were going. Then somebody made a terrible comment and they, they pasted it on the newspaper. I think whether he's on the front page with his picture. And then somebody said, Papa, Papa, see, see your, see your picture on that newspaper. Bishop Ode said, I am not looking. He said, can I buy it, sir? He said, if you buy it, don't show me. <laughs> See, people that are succeeding don't mind what people are saying. Because it is distraction. It, if you are listening to what people are saying, you won't go far in this life. Because whether you like it or not, if you are succeeding, they must talk about you. I'm telling you. So, if you don't want people to talk about you, don't succeed. Just do what every person is doing. Just be normal. But if you make up your mind not to be normal, then get ready for talk. But you know why I like God? As they are talking, God is blessing you the more. <laughs> you are blessed. There should be a difference between believers and unbelievers. That's the second reason why dressing decently is very important as far as evangelism is concerned. There should be a difference between believers and unbelievers. There should be a difference. There should be a difference between believers and unbelievers. There should be a difference. There should be a difference. There should be a difference. One day, they saw some people, they carried them, they packed them, police packed them. And the people say, we are coming from church. We are police say, which church? Now, so now they dress go church. Enter the motor. You, you, police say, now, so then they dress go church. So you, they use church lie. Now, all these small, small girls, where they lie to their parents, say that they go church, but they, they go somewhere. Enter motor. They, they went with them. Even these police parking people left, right, and center. They look at your face first. Is that correct? They look at your face. When they see you with, uh, what did they call that dada hair? And, and tattoo everywhere. They say, see one of them here. Even though you are a decent person, they carry you. Because your appearance does not look it. Praise God. Take your seat. There should be a difference. 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 The addressing should be different from our dressing. Be ye not unequally yoked together with the unbelievers. What fellowship has light with darkness? Huh? And then finally, men are looking at the outward appearance. So, why I'm saying this is somebody is, is possible for somebody in this service or watching me online. He's saying that hey, hey, godliness, holiness, not for heart. Now, how today? Dressing no matter. Dressing matters. Because men are looking at what? The outward appearance. Men are looking at the outward appearance. Everybody is looking at the outward appearance. So, dressing matters. God is looking at the inward appearance. That's correct. But we, are, we want to change the world. We want to pass a message to a word of iniquity. A word of sin. We want to pass a message. So, if we must pass a message, then it is very, very important that 
the way we behave, the way we talk, and the way we appear is very, very crucial. Get ready as we close. Five minutes. Message for Umba Moons. Message for Umba Moons. Just have one word to say, and then we rise to pray. Message for Umba Moons. Please, everybody hear me. Don't play with the season of the season that we are. Don't play with this season. Don't play with this season. If you are not aware, Umba Mons brings about the multiplication of attacks. The multiplication of satanic agenda. As the years end, the devil is, the devil is, is, is mopping forces to ensure that a lot of people are wasted, but you shall never be among them. Don't, you don't play. The only way to escape satanic agenda for the months of Umba is the presence of God. It's the presence of God. So, as attack is multiplying, poverty multiplying, death multiplying, accident multiplying, disaster multiplying, a man that carries the presence of God experiences the multiplication of favor. The multiplication of goodness. The multiplication of help. And God will surprise a lot of us. Mostly those of us that are in this 40 days fasting. Till the 10th of October. That, that is what it takes. I saw that. That's why I, 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 it, it was not something that I just felt like doing. It was, this 40 days fasting came out of revelation. I don't think we have done that before in this church. When I announced it, somebody said, what about 21 days fasting in January? That one is also coming. When we get to the bridge. So, it, it's a revelation. It's a revelation. Prayer. There are people that come here 12 every day. 12 noon to pray. It's not as if they don't have anything to do. It's not as Do you know that people can't pray? People cannot pray. You see them in church. They can't pray. They can't pray. Tomorrow is corporate prayers. It's not everybody that will be here. What we do in that meeting is just prayer. Just prayer. From one prayer to another from 6 to 7 p.m. You see, you see, you see, you see, on Saturday we are here. Early will I rise to seek the Lord. From 5 a.m. 5 a.m. you are running to church. 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Early will I rise to seek the Lord. Father, Umba Mons is here. I am helpless without you. I cannot cross to 2021 without you. I need you to cross. Help me to cross. Can I make a submission to one person here? The season of this year that COVID-19 has wasted, I declare that between now and 31st of December, all that you are meant to become, you shall become it. Amen. Jump on your feet with a shout of amen. amen. Somebody give the Lord a louder shout of amen. amen. So please, anything that will take you to the presence of God, don't play with it. Don't play. This year is already gone, except, except divine intervention. Except divine intervention. Anything that is a virus, you know they go quick. Presence of God. The presence of God. The presence of God. Presence of God. Are you aware that there are people that are still living outside the country, still coming back? They are still coming back. Everything is short. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. And I, I think virtually every month I must pray for people that are traveling. Somebody must come and bring passport. Virtually every month. Daddy, please, I want to go to U.S. I want to go to Canada. Since the beginning of this coronavirus, no, not one. No, not one. No, not one. <laughs> Jesus knows all of Yes, Jesus. 
international passport. Please. Tomorrow, 6 o'clock, be here. On Saturday, wow. How many of you have attended early will I rise to seek the Lord? Let me see with your hands. Every, I think it's every first Saturday. Every, eh? every first Friday. Uh, okay, because of corporate prayer now, it's every first Saturday. The only thing that is allowed in this church is change. Change is dynamic. So it's first Saturday. Please. Please. Eh? Yes, yes, everybody, everybody. Wow, let God watch you. Where is she going? By this time, by this time, make proper arrangement. There was one early will, early will arise. Some people slept in the church. Some people slept in the church. Make arrangement with transport. Come and cry to God. Come and seek the face of God. If you watch the lives of all those that were early risers, they were really outstanding. Who do you want to talk about? Abraham? Who do you want to talk about? Moses? Moses was an early riser. Who do you want to talk about? Jesus? Huh? David? Ah, father of early riser. They were all outstanding. As long as our night vigil has not started, don't play with early will I rise to seek the Lord. Lift up your hands and appreciate him for what you have done. Go ahead and appreciate him in Jesus' precious name. Let me hear somebody's loudest amen. amen. Please, there is somebody here that I need to lead to Christ. This is very important. There's somebody here that needs to decide to follow Jesus now. Now. There's somebody here that needs to call it a quit with that addiction. Lesbianism. Homosexuality. Masturbation, drugs, alcohol, tobacco. There's somebody that needs to call it a quit tonight. So I want to pray for two sets of people very quickly. Number one, if you are here and your ways are not right with God and you want to hand over your life to Jesus, you are tired of sin and you want Jesus to become the Lord of your life, I want to pray for you. Two, you are battling with addiction, pornography, sex, masturbation, right? And all of that. And you want God to help you. Please, I also want to pray for you. So if you are falling into any of these categories of people I've mentioned, I would like you to say this prayer, including our viewers from all over the world. Please, please, please. If, you're, if your life is not saved, you have no future with Jesus and future with God in this world or in the world to come. So wherever you are, I'd like you to say this short prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. I come to you today. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my life. I am now born again. Father, concerning this addiction, come and help me. Deliver me from this addiction. Set me free, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Please, if you said this prayer now, lift up your hands. I'll pray for you. God bless you. Yes, lift it high. Yes, lift it high. You said this prayer now. Counsel us. Take note of them. You said this prayer. Lift up. Counsel us. Some people are here and they are all standing there. Lift up your hands. Let them see you. There's a form I gave them to give you so that I can be praying for you. Father, I ask that you forgive the sins of these ones. Let the hood of sin be broken. Let the hood of sins be broken. Grace to serve God in spirit and in truth is released. Wherever you are now, let something be fired into your spirit that will transform your life, that will change your life. The hold of sin is broken. I take authority over every addition. Break that addition. And I set you free completely. In Jesus' precious name. Let me hear somebody's loudest. Amen. God bless you. I'm sure the form is reaching you. When you get the form, Fill it and return it. Counselors, are, the officers will come back to collect it. I'm going to send a message to you, boss.
promise me that when you see my message, you respond. I want to help you. Wave your hands and give him all the praise. We are going to dance for two minutes. I have three prayer points manufactured from heaven. You will pray like a wounded lion this night. Are you hearing me? Ember Moose requires a, a, attack it with prayer. Attack Ember Moose with prayer. And you will end surprisingly by the 31st of December. You will look at your life and you say, God is really good. Can I hear somebody's loudest amen? amen. While the presence is on, if you are here, there's something God has done for you, you have not testified. Uh, uh, one of our officers will be by the entrance of the church, by my right hand here. Go and meet him and let's know what God has done. Hit a praise. Can we go? Yeah, 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 yeah.
that pit of sickness, jump over the pit. As I just mentioned pit of sickness, three of you in this line, God said I should lay hands on you. Jump over the pit. Jump over that pit. Jump over that pit. Lift up your hands. Close your eyes. That eye that has opened upon somebody in this umber month. That negative eye, that evil eye that has opened up on somebody in this umber month. The eye say, I am waiting for you. If I be a prophet, I command that eye blinded tonight. Don't you pray? Lift up your hands. Say after me, Father, Father, thank you because you are my fighter in this month of Umba. Clap your hands and talk to God. Let God hear you talking to Him like that. Thank you because you are my fighter. You are my fighter. You are my fighter. You are my fighter. My fighter. You are my fighter. You are my fighter. You are my fighter in this month of Umba. Hey! Is there somebody here that God is going to fight for? Is there somebody here that Jehovah, El Shaddai, the man of war, is going to fight for? Then go ahead and pray. Call him your fighter. Call him your fighter. God is about to fight poverty. God is about to fight disappointment. God is about to fight sickness. God is about to fight death. God is about to fight failure. God is about to fight shame. God is about to fight stagnation. God is about to fight the people fighting you. God is about to fight the people attacking you. Even in this month of Umba, in Jesus, precious name we have praying. Let me hear an amen that sounds like thunder. I want to ask you a question. Are you ready for prayer? I, as I was praying, this prayer was coming from heaven. I carried my Bible and I started writing. If you see the way I wrote it, hurriedly, hurriedly, so that I don't forget. As it came, that was how I wrote it hurriedly. So lift up your hands. Don't mind anybody. Pray like a wounded lion. These three prayers, these three prayers we give to you now, we make you end this September well. So lift up your hand. Say, my father, my fighter. Shout it, shout it. My father, my fighter. Shout it, shout it. Are you ready now? Say after me, my father, my fighter. Help me to fight those fighting me. That's right, that's right. Shaka Tagabadala. Clap your hands and turn it into prayer. My father, my fighter. Hey. My father, my fighter, help me to fight those that are fighting me. Help me to fight those that are fighting me. La 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 
Yes, yes, no spirit of disappointment. No spirit of disappointment. Walk it through her spirit husband. Walk it through spirit wife. That's right, that's right. No more, no more. See the spirit going. See the spirit going. See the spirit going. Ushers, ushers, ushers. See the spirit going. You see the spirit going. See the spirit going. See the spirit going. It's the spirit that is working. Ushers, help somebody there. Help somebody there. Help somebody, help somebody. It is a spirit that is working. Two spirit husband, two spirit wife. To establish someone in disappointment. Get out! In Jesus. Precious name, we have prayed. <laughs> See another dangerous prayer. We want to invite a dangerous angel. Something will happen in this atmosphere now. In ushers, please, I don't want anybody to be injured. Something is going to happen in this atmosphere now. I can introduce to you the angel we want to invite, Angel Michael. As I mentioned the name, even the atmosphere is changing already. So lift up your hands. And please follow the prayer. Because in this church, we don't pray to angels. Follow the prayer. Say after me. Anywhere they have tied me. Somebody shout fire! <laughs> hey, shatter, something is about to happen. They tie your room, your room is about to open. They tie your business, your business is about to open. They tie your destiny is about to open. They tie your career is about to open. Lift up your hands, say, anywhere they have tied me, I ask for permission for the release of Angel Michael. Oh Lord, through your son Jesus, I ask for permission. Angel Michael, enter the matter. Clap your hands, help them, help them. Ushers. Angel Michael. Interesting. 
buried the person and the person didn't give you your destiny before the person was buried. And Jemichael just went to the grave. Hey, this got too much. The person collected something from you, but he didn't give it back for you before they buried him. But tonight something is happening. Something is happening. Something is happening. Close your eyes. Something is happening. Something is happening. Happening. Yes, there's a recollection of your destiny. And it's being redirected to your direction. It's being redirected to your life. Somebody shout, I receive it. Finally, before we go, lift up your hands. Say after me, in this Umba months. Grant me speed to make up for my wasted time this year. You see the you see the prayer? Lift up your hands again. Say in this month of Umba. Shout it in this Umba months. Grant me speed to make up for my wasted time. If you can pray better than everybody here, you shall see the you'll be the first person to start experiencing speed. Clap your hands now. Go ahead and pray. Leko pareke sete lege dush, reke te seke tush, shanta brega sata lagadas. Leko parege sete gadush, reke te seke tush, zukata yaga brega sata lagadas. Shanta brege sete lege dush, eko te zuga brege sete lege dush. Shata bada la gada la gada In Jesus precious name we have prayed. Let me hear somebody's loudest amen. Okay. God just gave me one declaration to make. Please, as I make this declaration, you shout amen four times at the top of your voice. This is the declaration. Where you are meant to be this year, that COVID-19 came to delay. Between now to 31st December, I move you there. Go there, go there, go there. Go there. 